Hi everyone, David Mala here, and today we're going to do part two of the uh, ARIMA analysis in R. So this is a whole process, and today's part is decomposition of the data. So as you can see here, this is the graph that we ended with in part one, where we were going, we cleaned up the data a little bit, and then we also got the monthly and weekly moving averages. So now that we have that, let's take this and move this over to the side here so you can see what I got here, okay? Now this is the section for decomposition of the data. You can see it right here, I'll highlight it for you right here. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take seasonality, trend, and cycling into account. So there's business cycles, there's trends that could be going on, and there's seasonality. So we're probably gonna to wanna to remove those, but you'll see later on, sometimes you might want to bring some of those things like seasonality back in. And I'll show you that, but that's going to be again in the later parts of this. So right now, today, we're going to deal with decomposition of the data. So this is a full-on uh, forecast business process and a data science project or data analysis project all in one. And this is what we do in data science and data analysis. So in this case, we are taking, I'm taking you through the full part from part one to part six all the way through an entire data science data analysis project involving forecasting uh, and getting accurate ARIMA forecasts on a time series uh, data set. So this is part two again and what we're going to do is we're going to start off with uh, where we left off last time. So I showed you that graph and now what we're going to do is we're going to go and use the same TS function we did earlier. We're going to omit any NAs or uh, your NOLs, NAs, things like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull this first on the data one count MA, which is that is the, uh, uh, if you look up here, let's take a look here. That is this one, the weekly moving average, okay? So we could have called it something else, but it's count MA, which is your moving average, and the other one is MA30, which is your uh, 30 day or monthly. So we're going to go with the uh, weekly right here. And then we have our frequency equals 30. And what we're doing is we're going to put that in here into the STL function. And what we're going to do is it's periodic and it's going to decompose that. And so what you're going to have is you're going to have count MA, the decomposing of it. You're going to have the de-seasonal or de-seasonalized count of that, um, which is season adjustment, which is a function on decomp, which is this. Okay, so this is where we build the count MA count underscore MA right here it gets built right here in this one then that's brought in here and that's how we build the decomp right here okay decomposition and then the decomposition this guy right here is brought in right here okay into the seasonal adjustment and that becomes the de seasonal count and we will use that later in our model and that's why I put this little thing right here used in a remodel, I could have said using a remodel later, that's fine, or down below, or whatever, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to plot this, and this is an interesting plot. So what do we want to do is we want to first go and take this whole thing, I, mean, I could build each piece individually and then plot it, or I could just do the whole thing, it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's hit control and enter here, and you'll see there's, now you can't see a whole lot of it yet, but let me bring it up big and show you why this is so important to see. This will now show us our data as it came in, because remember, this looks a lot cleaner than it did with all the lines all over the place. Well, keep in mind what we did is we switched to a moving average of seven, which is the uh, uh, weekly moving average. So that's why this looks a whole lot cleaner than that mess that was going up down all those lines, okay? I could have used the moving average for the 30 day and it would be even cleaner looking than this, but keep in mind as you do that, you know, you're taking a lot of uh, variance out and your accuracy is going to go down. So you want to take variance out, but at the same time you want to, it's like a scale. You, you don't want to take too much out. So then when you, that's original data, then you look, we're taking out seasonal or seasonality right here, you know, then that will be things like fluctuations, like maybe you sell more in the spring than you do in the summer, or maybe some more in the summer than you do in the fall. It could be winter slows things down. Some in sub businesses, winter could pick things up, especially if you're like selling snow blowers and stuff. Um, then we have a trend line, okay, and that shows us takes trending into account or cycling, things like that. And then this is the remainder. This is what comes out after we take out the seasonality and the trending. 
and this is over time and it's kind of cool to have this so this shows me what I have in uh, uh, trending cycling and seasonality okay and we've created this with the most important thing here is we end up with this de-seasonal count or this field here based on the seasonal adjustment of the decomposed data so you need to run this correctly to end up with this okay the plot just shows what we're doing but the plot isn't going to affect what's down it, it just shows you why and how and how this thing all works okay but you need this right here for the arima model later okay and then this just plots it it plots this the decomp i'm not plotting the de seasonal count so this is what's important for the plot these two lines here this is what's important which involves all three of these for down below for the arima model we'll get to that in a little bit okay so next what we want to do is we want to test for stationarity so we're going to do a visual check which we already did we have a lot of variance and you can look at this chart you can look at the other charts and you'll see it's all over the place okay so is there a generic a general up curve and down curve you know like sometimes you'll see some charts where it's just always going up and somewhere it's always going down or you have some very this is when you look at this it's non-stationary so what that means is it's going up and down and it's not the same over and over again so it's not like this this one would be the seasonal line here would be very uh, stationary okay you know that it's going up and down with the exact same uh, curve each time okay so this would be by visual we have a highly variant and non uh, stationary or not it's got non stationarity so now we do an augmented Dickey Fuller test okay and so what that is is we take this which is our seven day moving average again and we do the alternative hypothesis so we are already we know that we're non stationary and the alternative would be okay if that's false if that's bad we want to do the stationary Okay, and then what we do is run this, and it's ADF dot test, no underscore there or anything, and it's a function. And what we do is just hit Control and Enter, and let's bring this screen up a little bit so you can see this better. So there's the thing right there, and this is what I ran, and it tells you augmented Dickey Fuller test. It tells you the p-value, the lag order. The lag order is important. You're gonna see it later on. Okay, because that's how we figure out how to make our data more accurate and more uh, within the uh, borders, more within the upper and lower bounds of where we want to be. And here's the value. So as this value gets more negative, that's what you go by with the Dickey Fuller test, the more correct you are. So the alternative hypothesis is now stationary, which means that our data is non-stationary okay and that's what we want from this so that's just to prove so what we're doing here is we're doing a complete analysis this is decomposing the data and just so you don't get lost on this here this is a test now we're not taking this ADF test here and putting this in for our REMA model but this is a test to see do we have stationary or non-stationary data okay it's just a part of the process now above this what we did before was we have the uh, determination of the decomposition. Remember, we took out the seasonality, the trend, and the cycling, which is where this big graph right here was from, this four-part graph. And we end up with these very important pieces that we'll need later on, the de-seasonal count. You can call it whatever you want, but this is what I'm calling it. And this is our seasonally adjusted decomposition data, okay? So that's what this all, this whole thing right here is. So if you were to use it on another data set, you would put in your uh, moving average here, your moving average field that you already created earlier, and you would put in, uh, you would take in the TS function to remove uh, NAs and uh, fields with NA in them. Then you would decompose it with the STL function in a periodic manner, and then you would use the seasonal adjustment function to, on this decomposed data to get your de-seasonal count. That's the most important piece coming out of this one, okay, before you go into the next piece of this. 
Uh, this is just a test, this piece here. We're going to play it again later. You'll see it. And that's again the Dickey Fuller test, which is a pretty good test to back up uh, your visual check on whether you have stationary variance or not. Okay, so this was decomposing the data it was actually pretty simple and it gives you, what I'm doing here is you're building a argument. You're, you're documenting, okay, the, from the beginning we loaded in the data sets and you're documenting your testing of the data, the variance of the data, is this going to be reliable, you know, uh, is this data conforming, is this data good for this analysis for doing an ARIMA uh, forecast. So that's what we're doing here and we're, and we're removing the seasonality here to make our data cleaner. We've cleaned it already and we're going to make it, we're going to remove the outer liars which we already did in the previous one. And uh, so now after this, what we're going to do next, let's go down here and I'll show you, is the auto correlations and we're going to choose the model order. So that's where this piece that I told you about the lag that you saw right here, see this lag order equals seven, is going to come in really handy. Okay, so you'll because you'll see it again. All right, but that's what we're going to do next. So this was part two of building a complete and accurate ARIMA forecast in R. So part three, the next video is going to be doing the autocorrelations and choosing the model order. And soon enough, we're going to build this model, and you're going to be able to see it and do forecasting on it. It's really cool, and you can use this for pretty much any time series data set you want. And you're by doing this test. And doing all the things I'm showing you here, I'm walking you through a complete data science uh, forecasting project from part A all the way to the end. And this is something that if you want to get a job in data science or data analysis, you need to know how to do. This is what we do every day. Thanks again for watching. Please make sure you watch the uh, part three. And if you haven't watched part one, please go back and watch part one, then part two, and so on through part six. There's a six part series. Please subscribe and like and check out my channel for other videos if you want. But uh, stay tuned. I'm going to post up part three next. And uh, this will take you all the way through to the end of a complete data science, data analysis project that will impress your peers, impress your boss and even impress data scientists out there.